And you're watching The Rock Office. Hi, this is Richard Patrick from Filter, and you're watching The Rock Office. Hey, everyone out there, you've reached The Rock Office. It's time to clock in and rock out. I'm your host, Bill Smith. And I'm Kevin Davis. we got a brand new episode, season three. Here we are, bringing you Richard Patrick from Filter. Tell him a little bit about what we're going to talk to him about, Bill. Well, many of you may know he is a native Clevelander, so we're going to be speaking with him about his hometown. And they have had so many hits in their career that we're going to be speaking about their past as well as present hits and they're still on the road still making great albums for fans of them and it's going to be interesting to talk with them especially uh, a hometown boy who made good if you will so it's going to be interesting yeah the guy that got out of cleveland or at least one of them so to speak <laughs> yeah so uh he's gonna be calling in here uh calling skyping, skyping in yeah yep. uh skyping calling whatever the case chiming uh but uh we're expecting him to be in here any minute so uh yeah let's go ahead and uh let's go ahead and bring him on here and uh here we go richard patrick all right we are bringing you our live skype interview with richard patrick from filter who is a uh former clevelander and uh mr patrick do you have any thoughts or any fond memories of your uh former hometown that you'd like to share with us well, Cleveland's a Cleveland's a really beautiful city, and I'm you know I'm from there. I'm from Bay Village. Oh, okay. I grew up in Bay Village, and uh, uh, you know, right around uh, 1987, um, <laughs> I met a, I met a young man by the name of Trent Reznor, and he worked high keyboards and audio, and we became friends, and then we started Nine Inch Nails, and uh, the rest is history. The rest is history. That's awesome. So, you know, I, I got to ask you, Filter, you know, you guys have had so many really popular song, big hits, uh, Hey Man, Night Shot, Take a Picture, you know, and your catalog is so diverse. I mean, just going between those two songs, for instance, is, can you elaborate a little bit about those two songs in particular and maybe how your fans react to such uh, diversity in the, the range of music that you guys create? Right. Well, you know, take a picture. Our song "Take a Picture" was uh, extremely popular, and right. uh, that actually was in the pop charts. So um, we've—I I made a conscious decision to on short bus to have a couple moments like "Stuck in Here" and uh, "So Cool" songs that were just really, you know, uh, more experimental. Okay. And um, by the time we got to, you know, take a picture and welcome to the fold on on title of record, those were the two areas uh, that um, I realized I could go and people would accept it. And, um, you know, a lot of the heavy fans love Hey Man, Nice Shot. A lot of the, the uh, you know, the, the girls like take a picture. So um, and plus, I mean, you know, the reality is, is, uh, you know, you know, not to use this as an example, but when you, when you listen to, you know, like an Imagine Dragon record, there's parts of it that are almost hip hop. And then there are parts of it that are folk. And it's like, so, you know, we were toggling in between like a grunge industrial to a more like uh, almost like a world beat kind of thing. Uh, some of our influences like Peter Gabriel, you know, they, they, they kind of come out after a while. And you know, U2 is a huge, you know, favorite of mine. And um, so for us, it was it was mainly just to keep exploring, you know, um, all the different, uh, you know, things that we enjoy hearing. I mean, I love the visceral sound of a guitar riff and um, as well as like, you know, uh, the sound of a piano. You know, the, the song It's My Time, I think, sticks out on the record just because of its simplicity. 
Right. Well, that actually segues nicely into my next question, which your uh, newest album, The Sun Comes Out Tonight, uh, you know, once again, that's a great album, and it is so diverse. There's so many different uh, genres, you know, places you guys explore and go to that, you know, people that are casually familiar with your music may not uh, understand or be familiar and kind of know what's going on. Maybe, you know, explain a little bit of your thought process behind the new album and, you know, with mixing it up like you guys have. Well, I mean, I love those songs. And, and so for me, like, when we did – when we did uh, – you know, the sun comes out tonight. We were, we were like, what is it about Hey Man, Nice Shot that makes people go crazy? What is it about that? And I was talking to Greg uh, Wattenberg from Wind Up, and he was just like, you know, it's that murky verse, and like you're talking about something that's kind of screwed up, and, you know, your subject matter is like really intense. And, and then he's like, and then you got that big rhythmic guitar. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And I do miss... I do miss elements of that song in, in the last two records or the last three records. So the song like self-inflicted, that was a song that it's about school shootings. You know what I mean? It's already okay. the subject matter is so heavy. Okay. Right. And, and it's about how somehow these victims are like, you did this to me, that society did this to me. And, hmm. and you know, so this is self-inflicted and, you know, and, um, and then I just, you know, I just make sure that I really hit him in the face with a very heavy chorus. And, uh, so within those confines, you, you, you start, you start kind of seeing music writing as like a puzzle and you just start piecing things together and you go, you know what, they're, there, there, there is something amazing about the, you know, just punching someone in the face in the chorus and having murky <laughs> choruses. And so, you know, it's all within, you know, for me, it's, it, you're not really repeating anything because you're doing something brand new that is, that is sonically like people were like, wow, you know, what do you say is almost like, Hey man, nice shot part two. And I'm like, well, we're the band that wrote, Hey man, nice shot. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. of course we're going to sound like ourselves and why not? <laughs> and so I had avoided it for so long and I got very experimental, like on anthems for the damned. And, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, the other song that was really kind of, um, important to me on, uh, uh, um, the trouble with angels was no love. And that was a completely new direction, but there's also something to be said about, you know, reflecting on your career and going, you know what, there is some really cool stuff. Like I remember when I was a little kid, when I heard the, some Rolling Stones records, when they made like, um, I think they made like uh, undercover of the night. And it was just, I was just like, oh man, someone's got to go and tell those guys to write songs like honky tonk woman. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I remember thinking that to myself when I was a kid, like if I ever met Mick Jagger, I'd say, go write, you know, satisfaction again, or go write something <laughs> cool like that. You know, just not knowing that's, that's a really mean insult and insulting thing to say to an artist, but, right. um, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's kind of true for me. And so I, I go ahead and I accept the, the fact that like, you know, there is some amazing, you know, qualities about those early records. So why not draw from them? Cause anything I do now is going to be hinged in where I'm at right now. So, I mean, you can, you can hear there's a sonic difference between those two records and, and you know, and, and, and I've grown as a lyric lyricist and I've grown as a singer and I, you know, I, I pride myself on where I'm at today. So I, I just incorporate who I am now and I also look at my past and, and look at, so, you know, and, you know, with the song, like, what do you say? It's like, well, that was a hit this year. So, you know, you know what I mean? Now, now, right, I, right. now I don't have to worry about any, you know, any kind of, um, if anyone sits there and says, you know, you had two big hits in the nineties, it's like, yeah, I know. So I also had a really huge hit this summer. So right, or exactly. last summer. So exactly. Now that's awesome. Now, Going back to Cleveland a little bit, because, you know, hometown proud, do you keep tabs on uh, what's going on here in Cleveland, uh, you know, musically or, you know, with any of the other, uh, you know, big announcements that have been uh, made lately? But, you know, do you keep your finger on the pulse of the city at all? Cleveland gets whales on, you know, throughout the world. But Cleveland, you know, I mean, I, you know, 
like I said, Trent and I and and uh, there's a lot of amazing bands. Look at the, just Akron, you know the the Black Keys. I mean, you know, yeah, right. God's sakes, they're they're playing. They played Staples Center twice, and uh, wow. um, uh, you know, just last year. So, I you know, and look at Chrissy Hines. She's from Akron. So, yeah, and, and Devo's from Akron. You know, there's a lot of Akron. We gotta we gotta move some of those folks up. All right. Well, I'm exactly as far. You know, I'm from Bay Village, which is it's a, it's the Cleveland area. You know, essentially. Right. But. Um, the reality is, is you have to, uh, uh, you know, you just have to kind of, I, for one thing, I'd like to thank like a guy like Tom Hanks for bringing the, the, the rock and roll hall of fame stuff from New York to Cleveland. He's from Cleveland. You know, he used, oh, I didn't to, know that. The, he used to do plays at the state theater. I didn't, I didn't know that about him back in the eighties. Absolutely. Tom Hanks is a very huh. big Cleveland supporter. And, um, so well, that's like Dave Grohl with the Foo Fighters. I, he's from Warren and look at the success yeah. he's had, you know, tremendous success. Yeah. Was, yeah. He's, he's been doing amazing. And so, yeah, there's, you know, that, you know, whether or not, you know, he heard the music scene was going off in Seattle and he went off to Seattle and found Nirvana. And then, you know, uh, you know, I re- then I moved to Chicago and put filter together through there. Um, but Cleveland has, for me, Cleveland has the, um, like, you, you know, you really got to pay your dues in Cleveland. Oh yeah. You, gotta, you know, when I was, <laughs> when I was a kid and I would look at people and go, yeah, I want to be a musician. I want to be a rock star, you know, or, or I, you know, I don't think I said rock star, but I, I you know, I want to, I want to go off and be a famous musician or something. And, you know, you'd get that look, right. you know, and, uh. They go really, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, we're going to the steel mill. Don't don't talk to us. Don't talk to us about your dreams. Right. But once you kind of get through that layer of you know um, discrimination, I, I guess I that, you know you know that that first layer of. Uh, but at the same time, the kids in my high school and the kids in my you know grade school were always like, "Rich, you're a singer. You you got to do this stuff," you know, and so. Um, you know, and again, you know, if it wasn't for Cleveland, I wouldn't have met Trent and I don't think I, I, I think I would have probably made it on my own terms, but I certainly did get a lot of help from him and, you know, and he moved from Erie to Cleveland, you know, to oh. find a bigger city. Wow. Well, certainly, uh, you guys probably would have eventually found their, your own route to go. Um, one thing we like to ask all of our guests is we are always uh, fans of physical music, you know, CDs, LPs, kind of frown against the digital downloaded revolution, as it will. And we just like to ask our guests, what do they think about digital downloading versus uh, actually having a physical product in hand? And what are your preferences? And do you have any thoughts or anything that you like to elaborate on? on this kind of debate, if you will. Well, my, my take on the subject is one of acceptance. Okay. As well as, um, you know, what I grew up with. I grew up with CDs. Okay. My records, my brothers had all the records that I wanted to listen to. And I would take that goddamn thing out. I would (laughs) sneak it out and I would put it, on the record and I would clean it and I would put the little needle down and I'm 10. So I'm like, you know, and I would get my ass kicked by <laughs> Terminator and, and you know, the other one. And, uh, so I, I was like, Oh, records, man, God, I need something that can, I can just deal with. And CDs came out and I was like, the future is here, you know? So, uh, it was easier to make mixtapes. You know, with um, and making mixtapes, I had it perfectly down. I had I knew exactly how far I could push, how far I could crush the tape with the level. I knew exactly how loud I could make it. I had a cheap little, oh, I don't even know what kind of tape deck, but it was so loud. I could make my cassettes like I could master them so loud. You know, and some of these really nice uh, cassette decks, they were like you get a dent on you know, cassette deck. And it was, the level was never pegged enough. It was right. never hard. You know what I mean? It wasn't loud enough. So, and I knew exactly how to push the cassette 
loud enough so that it wouldn't crush my car stereo because you know that those old car stereos sucked <laughs> even when you like spent some money on them you you still didn't get the subwoofers until the 90s right i think so so all through the 80s i was like i'm a i'm a i'm a cd guy well the world has changed the world has changed, and let me let me let me let me ex let me explain how it's changed. Okay. Um, in 1996, my song "Hey Man, Nice Shot" went to number 14 on the Active Rock charts. Okay. We sold a million records. Wow. A million CDs. My song "What Do You Say" went to 13. On the active rock charts. All right. We sold like 40,000 CDs. Wow. So it's like as an artist now, there's a lot, there's a lot more downloads, obviously. But the reality is, is, you know, uh, not having physical has taken a huge toll on our industry. Right. Um, you know, there's, you know, people joked about it on movies for the last five years where they're like, Oh, you know, you know, downloading. Oh, well, I don't have that. Oh, what are you going to get me for downloading music or what? You know, they always make that joke. The reality is, is there was 2,500 people at Warner brothers when I was there and now there's 60. Oh my gosh. So all those people lost their jobs and you know, it, it restrains the artists. Uh, you, you can't do as much as you want to do in a studio. You can't do, you know, sure, you know, P. Diddy or whatever, he's going to be fine. He's always making tons and tons of cash. But the reality is, is a lot of bands, and bands are expensive. Bands, you got to spend, you, you got to spend like a couple years mastering your instrument. You have to learn how to play the guitar. Um, you know, uh, rap, it's, you, you you grab a couple of rhymes and you put some attitude behind it. And I'm not saying anyone can rap, but like anyone can rap is what I'm fucking saying. I, you know what I mean? I'm not dissing. I love hip hop. And I did a, I was in a studio right next to Eminem when he was coming up and, and he was, I was at uh, the mix room when he was working on his record, uh, Slim Shady. Wow. And um, so I have all the respect in the world for rap and, and, and hip hop, but you know, you can see it like how it goes. It's like, it's this, it's this triangle, like, you know, there's 60, there's 60 people in an orchestra and there's 25 people in a big band. Then there's four people in a rock band. Now that everything's electric, they can play louder and more people can hear them. And it's just the four of them. And now it's a DJ and a, and a, and a it's then it's a DJ and a rapper. And then it's one person, it's Skrillex. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. It's one person. So, or, you know, dead mouse. So we're at that level where it's like, you know, one person can have the entire. Now, uh, Trent still uses a lot of musicians. He's still, mm. you know, there's a, he's, he's still employing a lot of people in his band. He's still he's doing that. Skrillex isn't. Skrillex got a great lighting guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Skrillex put his money in the lighting and just. But that, I love Skrillex. And I'm, I'm I, you know, so I'm, I'm a fan of all this. Yeah. Well, that was certainly an interesting uh, response. Probably one of the best we've had on the show so far. Uh, let me see. Let me ask you here. Um, now, what's on the horizon for you guys uh, for Filter? What can the fans be looking forward to in the next little bit here coming up? Most importantly, we're going on tour. Uh, and uh, look for us this summer in the United States. Okay. Uh, now, where can people find those tour dates? Where can they find information on uh, getting your music, your merchandise, stuff like that? Where, where can they find you guys at on the web? Everybody can find us on officialfilter.com. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, facebook.com slash filter. And uh, then there's, uh, you know, Twitter. Okay. And I, I, most of the... Uh, the band uh, Instagram comes through my account, Richard Patrick. Um, okay. Uh, one word, Richard Patrick on Instagram. And then there's, you know, you can look for us on Vine. We all, four of us do Vines, and that's pretty fun. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff out there. Cool. Uh, just look for us. Just hit, go to Google, hit 
fil- filter the band or you know filter music and you'll find us no problem okay well listen mr patrick i won't take too much more of your time i want to thank you for being on the show it was great talking to you and it's it's great to see a, a fellow clevelander uh make so much uh success and so much uh, music that has really spoke to a, a generation and continues to speak to a generation so you know we can just hope you guys have uh, much more success and we're looking forward to when you come back home to cleveland and hopefully we can uh, catch up with you in person and catch a show awesome that's great Cool. All right. Take care, and we'll talk with you later. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Bye. Bye. All right. That was it. Richard Patrick, Filter, Cleveland guy. You heard it here. Great interview, and uh, I'm going to be right back. All right. Richard Patrick, what a great guy. Filter, super band. Obviously, they are still making great music. They've been making music since the 90s with success then and now. And sure. It's great to see, like we said earlier, a gentleman who was born and raised in the Cleveland area who has gone on to that level of success. And uh, it was cool to talk with him and get his perspective on these issues that we discussed. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of people uh, out there should be aware, but if they are not, of course, you know, uh, his uh, startup of Nine Inch Nails with Trent Reznor, you know, uh, meeting Trent uh, around in this area, I think that was pretty cool, you know, uh, and, and of course... Then launching into Filter, huge, huge band. Uh, it was real. Uh, it was real good talking to, with Richard. We're glad that he was able to get on with us and uh, uh, his manager, um, Julie. Yes, Julie. Thank you for orchestrating everything. And actually, uh, Richard, thank you for. Uh, I know you. T- we've been tweeting each other back and forth, and we appreciate it. It's a uh, really is a pleasure to be able to meet you and speak with you uh, in the context that we have. So we hope you like the episode too. Absolutely. And for all of you, uh, we want you to continue to support what we do, uh, you know, as well as uh, those that we talk about, uh, you know, support their music, support our podcast if you can. Uh, you know, make sure you check us out uh, on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash rock office. Like us over there. Share some of the stuff that we have. Uh, you know, if you don't like it, you don't share it. It doesn't get out there. Facebook's uh, changing the way that some of that stuff uh, gets to you guys, you know, uh, when we post something, it doesn't get out to everybody because, you know, Facebook's trying to make it so that you have to pay to promote. And, uh, you know, uh, if you like something, however, though, it does get out there. So uh, make sure to hit that like button. We appreciate it a lot. And, uh, you know, check us out over on Twitter. Twitter hasn't gotten quite so uh, uh, bogged down with the whole, uh, you know, promotion slash uh, advertising dollar sort of thing. So, uh, you know, we're doing a lot more over there on Twitter nowadays. Uh, check us out on Twitter at the underscore rock underscore office. Bill, any other places they can check us out? Uh, the rock office.com. You can read our weekly blog, a bunch of different reviews and points of view on things concerning music. Also, we are on Instagram, sure. uh, Instagram.com slash rock office. And we have a bunch of stuff everywhere. Just rock office.com. It'll lead you YouTube, iTunes, podcasts, and all that stuff. So, right. But we do appreciate the support. We love the comments, good and bad. Uh, we also have a bunch of merchandise that we would love if you would take off of our hands. So make sure you go to our online store at rockoffice.com and get our T-shirts, our stickers. Uh, you know, we maybe even sell a couple locks of Kevin's hair if you want. So, uh, <laughs> but um, with hey. with. It brings in the sponsorship dollar, we'll do it. There you go. If you're interested in sponsoring an episode, email us at info at the rockoffice.com. We'll get you that information pronto. Absolutely. Well, as always, thank you guys for tuning in. Remember, support your local independent record store by buying the physical copy of the music instead of the digital download. We'll see you next time on The Rock Office. Take care. God bless.